Greetings from beautiful downtown Hebo. And those of you who have been here for a while know that I don't particularly preach according to the calendar and what's going on in the calendar. However, today I am going to preach about what's on the calendar and we're going to be addressing Father's Day. And uh, why am I addressing Father's Hood or Fatherhood? Father's Hood. How many hoods are fathers? Anyway, um, quite a number of them nowadays. But anyway, um, yeah. But one of, some of the reasons why I'm addressing this issue is, you know, number one, because I'm a father. Okay. Number two, I help Crystal raise three children. And most of you know them because they were raised in this church. And number three is the studies that I am hearing about claim that the single most powerful issue uh, that is going on today, when it's, you know, and doing the race thing and all that stuff there, uh, the number one problem isn't color, it isn't wealth, it isn't religion, and it isn't culture. <clears throat> the single most important issue that is causing problems today is the lack of fathers in the family situation. Lack of fathers. Now, I have found out that being a father is a lot of fun. Now, there's a lot of responsibilities that come along with it. And one of the things that I found out is that I have to be careful of what I do. Because in the summertime around here, you know, there's, there's flies. And flies get in the house. And so dad goes around and he kills flies. So what does young son do? Oh, he gets on a chair so that he can kill that fly. It's like, you little copycat. You know, he's just, he copies everything that dad did, you know. That was Hans, you know, starting off. So I learned a little bit with Hans. I had to be careful what I do. And when it comes to little girls, what do little girls like to do? They like to get into mother's lipstick and eyeshadow and, and uh, dress up like mom. And, uh, you know, and they'll put on a little tea party for you. And so you got to sit there and you got to through this, this little tea party and, and all that stuff. You know, get, get with the program, you know. That's what little girls do. Well... Children grow up doing what? But imitating their parents. Some of the good, some of the bad. And, um, you know, if the parents are conducting themselves in an unhealthy way, you know, sometimes kids can recognize that even on, on an early age. And they'll make up their mind. It's like, no, I'm not going to do the drugs. I'm not going to do the alcohol. I'm not going to do all that abusive stuff. I'm, not, I'm just not going to go there. I know what mom and dad do, and I am not going to do the same thing that they did. If it's in an unhealthy way. Hopefully they do copy mom and dad when mom and dad are healthy and they're walking with the Lord and they just copy mom and dad as mom and dad walk with the Lord. Good stuff. So <clears throat> one of the things we're going to be dealing with, well, the thing we're going to be dealing with is, is role playing. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, you know, uh, my hero was Superman. Nothing could hurt Superman. He was strong. He was invincible. He could leap over tall buildings in a single leap, you know. And so you get on the bed and you jump off the bed and unfortunately you came down. <clears throat> you know. It was one of the things that I did. And then since I lived out on a farm, all right, well, and I had 164 acres to roam around in. Well, you know, what do you do when you're about a 10-year-old kid? Well, by golly, I had this board that came to a point, and it was one of those tongue-and-groove boards, you know, that had busted off. So I had this, I had a rifle. 
you know? And I would take that nail and I'd put it in the groove and, and it was nice because I never ran out of bullets, you know? And I could roam all over that farm, all over the hills, all the way through the woods. And what would a guy do with a gun in those days? Well, cowboys and Indians, you know? It's good when you never run out of bullets and the Indians are after you, you know? That was before they became, uh, what, First Nations and uh, Native Americans and all It's you know, identity issues. So anyway, had a great time playing all over my dad's farm. But then, you know, <clears throat> about 10 years old and stuff, uh, you know, baseball. My dad used to like to watch baseball and all this. Like, okay, so what do you got to do? You know, if you're getting into baseball and you're the only one, well, you're a pitcher, right? You get a rubber ball and you got the side of a barn right there. It's like, all right. You know, I pitched nine innings of baseball all by myself, both teams. Yeah, both the I was, I, you know, I pitched for both sides. You know, amazing thing about it is my side always won. You know? So, so rigging something isn't anything new. You know? I rigged, I rigged the game way back when. I was, I was pitching. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, well, what, what do people do today? You know, who do they look up to today? How about celebrities? You know? Athletes, you know, pro athletes, uh, Hollywood, you know, all that stuff there. The Kardashians, you know. It's like, why imitate the Kardashians? You know how many relationships they go through? They're really good at relationships, aren't they? It's like, mm, not, you know. Uh, what do they do? Fame and money. Okay, great. Lots of fun. Yeah. Whoopee, you know? So why imitate them? Why imitate, you know, some of these basketball players? It's not, okay? Now here's the thing about, about uh, role-playing game or fantasy role-playing games. They hit the market in about 1973, and uh, <clears throat> it was TSR Hobbies. And the company was formed by Gary Gygax. And he started it with $1,000 in 73. In 74, Brian Bloom invested $2,000 in the company. Okay? Now, what was the name of the game that they marketed? Dungeons and Dragons. Exactly. You know? And, and as the sales increased, what did they do? But they developed more games for people to get involved in. And by 1985, TSR Hobbies raked in more than $100 million. Wow, you know? And uh, now, in the age of TV, which really got started kind of like right after World War II, and, and parents found out that they had a great babysitter on Saturday morning. What did they have on Saturday morning? Saturday morning cartoons. Now, what can possibly be wrong with Saturday morning cartoons? Well, do you know that Christianity is not the only religious organization out there that is trying to evangelize the world and get their principles and their mindset across to the people? You know who else is doing it? The Hindus. And you know what they ended up coming up with? How are they going to evangelize the Western world? Saturday morning cartoons. And you know what they came up with? Masters of the universe. You know? And She-Ra, princess of power. And then we have Smurfs and Care Bears. You know? That's, that's all coming out of that mindset. 
So if they can indoctrinate our children at an early age, when they get to be adults, slides right in there. They accept all their stuff that happens. Now, <clears throat> on these role-playing games, these fantasy role-playing games, okay, Dungeons and Dragons and that, that family group there, you know that many of the spells, incantations, symbols, and protective measures are the genuine occultism techniques. They're the real thing, the real deal. And that these, these games are basically a catechism of occultism. It's, real, it's, it's the real stuff. So, this morning we're going to take a look at role-playing and what the scriptures have to say about it. All right? So, the title of this thing is not only Father's Day 2022, uh, but you could say the subtitle to this is Imitate Me. Okay? Now, it takes a very bold and secure person to sit there and go, follow me. Follow my example. If you're going to imitate anybody, you imitate me. Now, there's a story of a pastor who was having trouble with his son. Son didn't like to go to church, didn't like to hear about God, didn't like to do all that Christian stuff. And it's like, and so the father sat him down one day and says, what's the problem? What's, what's, what's the issue here? And the son goes, that's the people. They're just a bunch of hypocrites. I was like, really? He said, yeah. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And he's just fed up with those people. And, and he's, so he's not going to go to church, and he's not going to do any of that stuff because of the people. You know? So the pastor goes, tell you what. You don't look at the people. You look at me. You watch me. You watch what I do. Bottom line on that, the son is now in full-time ministry today. Watched his dad. Okay? So, let's get into the scriptures. And we're going to start with the Apostle Paul. And uh, we're just going to cruise through a whole bunch of scriptures because that's what I have basically from here on out. So, the Apostle Paul, he's addressing a church at Philippi. And in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Brothers and sisters, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. And as he addresses the church at Corinth, in 1 Corinthians 4, 16, he goes, Therefore I urge you, be imitators of me. And in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, it says, Be imitators of me, just as I am of Christ. All right? So then let's go to Christ. Let's see what kind of an example he is. Well, we have the mind of Christ. We'll start off with that. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same purpose, because the one who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So, next point is, being done with sin, like Jesus is done with sin. Well, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. <clears throat> Have this attitude in yourself, which, also, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we're to have the same attitude, same mindset. All right? So let's go to the next, next uh, topic here. Humility and servant. Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. But emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant and being born in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on the cross. So we have here, it's, it's sowing a seed. What is that? Obedience. All right? Obedience, we have Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. Who's Jesus talking about? The Father's. So he came to do what? The Father's will. Now, <clears throat> he is known as our shepherd. And what does a shepherd do? Well, the shepherd provides. 
In Psalms 23, verses 1 and 2, The Lord is my shepherd, I will not be in need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. Um, and is he caring about you? Is he tender? Isaiah 40, verse 11. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his, arms, in his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in the fold of his robe. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. And um, he's also sacrificial. John chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And how about the compassion of Christ? Well, that's in John um, 11, verse 35. Now, those of you who uh, want to have... I'm going to teach you a memory verse today, okay? You're going to learn scripture today, and if anybody ever asks you anything, you say, I know a verse, a whole verse. The hardest thing about this verse is the reference. John 11:5. 5. 35. See? Got it wrong already. I told you, the hardest part is the reference. So what's the verse? Jesus wept. That is the shortest verse in the whole Bible. And it's only two words. Jesus wept. Now in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, it says, Seeing the crowds, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. Yeah, wandering all over the place. Okay. Anyway, let's go to the next point. Sufferings of Christ. Isaiah 50, uh, verse 6. I gave my back to those who strike me, and my cheek to those who pull out my beard. I will not hide my face from insults and spitting. <clears throat> and uh, I believe it was during uh, 18 whatever when uh, the Wesleys were doing a revival across the United States. Uh, and there, and there was two brothers. And uh, John Wesley was one of them and he had a, a brother. And his, his brother was sitting there going, Oh, I'm backslidden. And John's sitting there going, Backslidden? What are you talking about? Backslidden. He goes, I'm backslidden. I got to be backslidden. Backsliding. Oh, I'm in trouble. Really? Why are you in trouble? Because nobody has spit on me in three days. <laughs> what happened later on that day? Somebody walked up to him and spit on him. And he goes, yes, praise God. I'm not backsliding anymore. I'm okay, you know, because somebody spit on him. What would you do if somebody spit on you and insulted you? You know? I'd warm up my knuckles personally, but, you know, it's like, oh. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Uh, all right. So Luke 22, verse 44. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. That's when he was in the Garden of Eden, and he was wrestling with, he was having to go to, you know, to be crucified. And, and he knew that. Uh, did he want to be crucified? Uh, no. He wasn't looking forward to it, but he knew he had to do it. You know? <clears throat> so, he did it. Now, the other part here is one that, that uh, I think some of us need to work on a little bit more. Um, because, you know, I've, I've told you before that, you know, some people when they come to church, they look like they're related to a horse. You know? It's like, really? Yeah. Are you saved? Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Well, let your face know, because I don't think your face knows that you're saved, that you've been redeemed. 
you know, because it, it just, it has all kinds of problems. So, you know, you know, and it's, it's kind of funny, but you know what I'm talking about because you've been in churches that, you know, somebody needs to get saved really bad, even though they, they've been, they claim to be walking with the Lord for 50 years, you know. It's like, well, let your face know that you have a good relationship going. Really, you know. But anyway. So we're working on the joy of Christ, okay. Um, in Revelation, chap that's not the book that's my point here. Point number one in Revelation. And the scripture is Luke 10, verse 21. At that very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. <laughs> Some of the stuff he's revealed to this dumb people. You know, that don't have 13 college degrees. Good. <clears throat> the last part there is, yes, Father, for doing so <clears throat> was well-pleasing in your sight. All right. Now, the joy of Christ in believers. John 15, 11. These things I have spoke to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. And how about lost sheep? You know, what does he do with the lost sheep? Well, in Luke 15, 5, and when he has found it, he puts it on his shoulders. And what does he do? He rejoices. He rejoices. <clears throat> All right? So questions, I got a couple questions for you this morning in closing. Question number one, who are you imitating? You know? Who? Who are you to imitating? The second question is, and should people imitate you? Should people imitate you? Okay? Which is heavy for us parents because, <laughs> you know? All right? So, we should be doing what but imitating the Lord? And the nice thing about imitating the Lord is what? The joy of the Lord is our strength. So, as, you're, as the joy begins to flow, you end up being a, a person that somebody can imitate. Now, years ago, when Crystal and I took, started to take a liking to one another, we were spending the time with my parents one day, and we are doing some traveling or whatever, and we stopped by a wayside area and stuff, and, and, uh, and Crystal had a bad headache. It, uh, she was hurting that day. So I said, well, tell you what, give me your foot. You know? So I took off her tennis shoe, and at the time, she didn't like to wear socks. You get the drift. I got the drift, too. But I pushed through the odor, and I took and I rubbed her foot. Okay? And what that did is that, that relieved the headache. It, it, you know, it started uh, relieving her of the headache, and she comes to this realization of, I could have this done quite a bit. And she has. Over the years, I have rubbed her feet a lot. You know? And it's great. She loves it. Uh, doesn't mind me rubbing her feet at all. So what did I do last night? I sat down on the couch and started rubbing her feet. And I looked over at Drace, who was on the other couch. And Monica was laying down. And her foot was on his lap. And he was rubbing her feet. And it was like, hmm, how about that? You know, little copycat. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Andreas and I had a conversation, you know, before Olivia was born. You know, she was coming along. She was, you know. And, and Andreas was worried about how good a father was he going to be? 
You know, he was, he was worried about that. So I asked him a very dangerous question. Dangerous for me, okay? The question was, how good a father do you think I am? And he goes, you're pretty good. Hmm. You know? It's like, ah, all right. All right? So then I go, well, it's kind of like this. I think my father was a pretty good father. So it's kind of like this. You have generations of good fathers leading up to this point, laying a foundation for you. And, and what has happened is this good father has equipped this good father who's equipped this good father. And I says, you can't help but be a good father because it's in your DNA. You know? It's like, oh, okay, yeah. And Hans is coming along, you know, and, and he just had a little one here. And so he's starting out on this fatherhood stuff, and he's enjoying the heck out of being a dad. You know, and it's like, there you go, you know. So I would end up watching, watching my sons interact with their kids, <clears throat> and I'm sitting there going, Man, I wish I was that good when I was their age. <laughs> but then when I was their age, I wasn't. So I wasn't a father. So I, you know, because I started late, which is really good because I got rid of some of the dumb stuff and I was able to be a, a calmer, more peaceful father. And that has paid dividends. So consequently, I've been watching uh, my children with their children, and they are absolutely awesome parents. And so it's like, good, you know? <clears throat> and I'm seeing what? My sons imitate me. And, uh, you know, that's what Paul was trying to get through to the churches. Who are you going to be like? Who are you going to imitate? He's going, you imitate me. You watch me, you, you, you know, follow my example of how I conduct myself as I follow Jesus. You know? So, it's kind of rough on pastors because pastors sit there and go, hey, you know, let me teach you how this is done. And uh, some people get a hold of it, and some people don't. Some people don't. You know? That's one thing about this is it's free choice. It's all up to you can't make anybody do anything. All I can try to do is be an example and be real and let you know the struggles that I go through and let you know also that there's victory on the, on the other end of stuff. Amen? Amen. So, are you going to be somebody that, that uh, people are going to Im imitate? You know? Try. Follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's pray. Lord, on this, on this day that the calendar says is Father's Day, Lord, there are a bunch of fathers out there that don't have a clue on what it's like, what it's really like to be a father. We have fathers that don't appreciate their children. Um, they don't appreciate uh, the woman that made them a father. Lord, the best way we can show our children uh, how to be awesome is to love their mothers. So, Lord, I ask that all the fathers would raise up and that they would, um, they would be the fathers that you intend for them to be. As you are our Heavenly Father uh, and Jesus is our brother, we are to follow his example. So, Lord, help us in the whole process. Raise us up and equip us fully. In Jesus' name, amen.